As you work your way through your organic chemistry journey, you will encounter many kinds of ways to describe molecules. The most common one you should be familiar with is the Lewis diagram. Now, if you take a Lewis diagram without showing the non-bonding pairs, you end up with a diagram called a structural formula. The one for ethanol, a very popular organic molecule, looks like this. These diagrams very clearly show the structure of the molecule, but they can get quite big and complicated. So for simplicity, a molecular formula can be used instead. This shows the number of each type of atom in the molecule. For ethanol, it would look like this. In between the molecular and structural formulae is something called a condensed structural formula. In this, the parts of an organic molecule are simplified, but the overall structure is still clear. To get even more simplistic, an empirical formula can be used. This only shows the ratio of each kind of atom in the molecule to the other atom, and doesn't tell you anything about the true number of each type. No matter how much we simplify down the drawing of an organic compound, it's never going to be efficient to draw the whole thing in an exam answer. This means we will need to know how to write the names of these organic compounds. The most important thing to understand is that all organic names are made up of a prefix and a suffix. We're going to conquer these ideas one at a time, so we'll be focusing on the prefix for this video. The prefix tells you how many carbons are in the chain of this molecule, and a table like this one will help you remember which prefix goes with which number. But what is a primary chain, and how do we come up with this number? We simply find the longest continuous chain of connected carbons. This chain is allowed to turn corners, but must never branch off. While this seems straightforward with compounds like this, where all of the carbons are in a line, it gets a little more tricky when there are carbons branching off in all different directions. The easiest way to ensure you get the correct answer is to write on the diagram. That's right, it's your exam paper. Feel free to deface it as much as you please. Take a pen and draw a circle around what you think is the longest primary chain of carbons. Now, if there was a possibility of a second chain, count out the carbons and see which one wins. The carbon chain you discover is the equivalent of the backbone to your organic compound. Each carbon in it will have four bonds extending off it, similar to our limbs. The length of the carbon chain is crucial to a large amount of the physical properties shown by an organic compound, so it is important that you get it right. Once you have your magic number, refer to the table again to get that all-important prefix. If it's six, you know you're dealing with a member of the hex family. Now, there's one last important lesson about carbon counting that will make sense after we've discussed groups. Sometimes, when naming compounds, you will need to give the location of a particular element or group on the chain. This number acts like a street number and tells us how far along the chain the item we're seeking is. For example, this compound is pretty straightforward, and a quick count will tell us that the carbon chain is four carbons long. So we are looking at a butte. But what if we were asked how far down the chain that OH group is? We simply give the number of the carbon it is attached to. But there's a catch. We want to give the smallest number possible, which means numbering the carbons from the closest side to the OH group. Let me explain. If we count the carbons from the left, we get the OH group on the third carbon down. But count from the right, and it's suddenly on the second. So which do we pick? For the sake of simplicity, we always choose the smallest number out of the two. So the OH group is on the second carbon. For more information on what this number is actually useful for, refer to our videos on alcohols and groups. But until then, make sure you can count your carbons forwards, backwards, and if you work out a way, diagonally too.